So Sai, Sai is joining with us today. He's from Hyderabad and uh, he's doing his uh, bachelor's in technology in the field of computer science. So he is passionate uh, about designing solutions aligned with the vision and ambition of product-based companies to solve global challenges. He also aspires to create an impact on human economics uh, using technology by creating and grabbing opportunities from taking many roles at Georgia Institute of Technology and later on going on working as an intern, intern at IIC. So welcome, Sai, to our channel. Hi, hi, Kutik. Thank you, thank you. So Sai, uh, take us through your journey. Like, where have you grown up and uh, where have you done your undergraduation? Sure. So um, I, was, I grew up in Hyderabad and um, I did my undergraduation at the Thapur Institute of Engineering and Technology. It's also known as Thapur University. It's in Punjab. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's I did uh, my I majored in computer science, so it's computer engineering basically. Yeah, so I'm almost done with my undergrad. I have just a few more days left. That's it. Great, great. Sir. So, how did you find your interest in computer vision and robotics? Like, how did you identify your interest in these areas? Sure. So uh, basically, after my first year, I interned at the National Innovation Foundation, which I connected to Srishti, which is an organization which tries to develop solutions through engineering students to, to a grassroots uh, problem, to, to, grass, to solve grassroots problems. So at Srishti, we were working on a particular problem called crop vandalism. Well, crop vandalism is where animals come and eat down crops in the absence of people. For, for looking for solutions to solve this particular problem, uh, we stumbled upon a computer vision based approach where we uh, kind of set up uh, cameras across the fence and then we do uh, neural net we use object detection models to identify cattle which is coming to eat down the crop and then we intimate the farmers so this is where my journey of computer vision started it might be a trivial project at that point but uh, it's kind of uh, you know, started gaining interest and it, my learning of computer vision actually started through this project and from then on uh, these kind of projects on, on my resume which were uh, impactful to the society helped me bag a few opportunities later on great great so, yeah. So uh, yeah, your profile, it says that you also man, uh, managed to develop Mitra with Inventor Robotics, which played a, which was a turning point in your UG uh, <coughs> life so far. So could you just sure, elaborate yeah. more on that? Sure. So uh, I was an intern with Inventor Robotics uh, during my sophomore summer year. So how I connected with Inventor Robotics is uh, they used the, the first time they launched the robot, it was at the Global Entrepreneurship Summit with Ivanka Trump and uh, Prime Minister Modi. And that's the time I actually saw this robot and this made in India concept. And I was like, okay, there was definitely a lot of potential or potential computer vision solutions which can be embedded onto the robot and can actually increase uh, the interaction of the robot with people. Uh, so I kind of cold mailed to everybody at Inventor saying that these are what I want to do and I feel this is in this way I can contribute in whatever little way I can. Um, so yeah, I, I was uh, I was able to bag an internship with them. So I interned for two months nearly with them and. At Invento, uh, I started working on problems such as facial recognition and interaction with customers. Say like, hey, Sai, how are you? And you know, age detection, gender detection, uh, offline, not using APIs and all. So that I was working on that particular segment of it, and eventually that also brought me got me uh, into robotics, such as ROS, robot robot operating system, SLAM, and so these ways both robotics and computer vision kind of uh, fused in at this particular point. And the, my intern at Invento, how it changed. The way I look at engineering is it changed the way I code completely. I started looking things as microservices or modularity of code. I had great mentors at Inventor. That's that's really important to have great mentors at any point. So who could guide me? I could go go to them and barge them and say that hey, how am I supposed to do this? And they would tell me the correct way. So that's how a turning point happened for me at Inventor. I made I made good friends, I could network actually. So yeah, that's how Inventor helped me a lot. So, so Mitra seems to be uh, seems to be a close ally of humanoid ro robot. So it is kind of I can say, uh, just correct me if I'm wrong, that it is yeah. more of a sophist sophisticated robot. So what what skills should you acquire? Like one should acquire in order to deliver such projects. Sure. So if you look at uh, Mitra uh, at this point, I'm sure it, it, it's not something like Boston Dynamics, which does flips and you know it does all kind of ac acrobatic. It's it's a robot which is supposed to be put in car in outside real world where it's trying to interact with customers, engage them while shopping or such kind of activity. So from my perspective, uh, uh, I'm, since I'm a student, I'm, I'm just an intern. The way I looked at it as uh, how do I contribute to the 
robot in by using my skill. So uh, I was doing through computer vision. So that is one way you can con enter into robotics. Uh, you can come into robotics through natural language processing. Uh, so it's an amalgamation of uh, a good robot is an amalgamation of different concepts of AI and mechanics and electric uh, electronics. So these are the different ways I would see you can enter robotics field. And once you're there, uh, you know, you'll start picking up stuff on your own. Like you can't just survive saying that, Acha, I am going to do computer vision and I'm going to put my hands off. You will eventually need to work on fixing, uh, you know, writing code for the jets uh, you know, or, or to be, make it suitable to hardware. So that's how I would, I would structure my learning curve. So start with something and then you will figure out with experience what you need as time goes by. Okay, sir. From from there on to prestigious Georgia Tech University, I, I see that you have done your internship over there also. So uh, first of all, tell us how how did you uh, get this opportunity? Like what 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 all groundwork did you do in order to get this chance from there? Sure. So uh, Georgia Tech again was a very important uh, phase for me because from I was I was always aspiring to do a master's or a PhD in the future. So I always wanted to enter good research labs abroad. So uh, while I was studying, while I was interning at Inventor Robotics, I had a, co a fellow intern uh, who was from Georgia Tech. And then he told me about a professor saying that there's a professor who really works very similar to what you're doing, my skill set. So then I started cold mailing a lot of professors. Like I literally wrote around 300, 400 uh, mails to different professors saying that I am interested in working in your research, how I could contribute to their research. And this one kind of clicked very well. So I had a series of assignments and interviews. And, um, and yeah, then I had my visa procedure. And after that, I was, I was funded to actually go there. So yeah, at Georgia Tech, it was, uh, I was working on, at Georgia Tech, I was working on LIDAR. So uh, it's basically at Georgia Tech what we were working on is managing civil infrastructure roads, like or it could be civil infrastructure like roads or traffic signs or assets on the road. And how do we manage their health and assess their health using LIDAR? So that was a very innovative project. And that is something which really was totally new to me. And this learning curve was extremely steep, uh, 3D mm -hmm. imaging. I used to work on computer vision, 2D images and object detection and stuff like that. But here it was uh, 3D and dealing with LIDAR data and things which are actually in production, like you have to go on the roads and collect the data. So that's something very new. And I think that's where abroad, uh, interning abroad really gives, gives you an edge. So yeah, that was how Georgia Tech happened. And um, I had a good recommendation from the professor. So those help, yeah, definitely help. Indeed, indeed it was a very great experience. I can say that for sure. Absolutely. So uh, you had mentioned about the interview process. Could you elaborate how was the, like, what was the, uh, procedure about like what was the interview experience like? Sure. So uh, the first moment I send my mail saying that I I work on so basically you really create an impression when you send an email like if you just send any email saying that I want to work with it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. You want to explain what you did so far, what the lab is doing currently, and how can you align your interest or your experience with what they are doing in the lab. So that it's not just, they're not going to take you if you want to learn. They'll take you if you want to contribute. So mm -hmm. you got to really explicitly mention how you can contribute. So the first step would be go through the projects and see that, okay, what are they doing and how can I contribute? And write that in the email, saying that I, can, I do computer vision and I feel I can contribute in so and so areas of your project. And then, then they'll come back with a set of interview questions which are related to that project. So my interview process was, uh, I had three assignments. Um, which okay first i had a normal phone call it was it was pretty typical uh, like what what are you interested in and it was a pretty general call nothing scary we based on after that i, I received a set of assignments which included uh, new, writing neural networks for tra traffic sign classification then doing perspective transform and then doing slam and then orb slam these are completely new stuff at that point for me but that's the whole fun of it you you learn and then you try to solve these assignments so three solid assignments and each one took almost three, three weeks. So they were very, okay. very friendly in giving me that time. So that's one thing you should really look at. So you need to start six months ahead. That is something I really recommend if you're looking for a foreign interview. So this was the interview process. And then they helped, they assisted me with the visa and everything. And then I could make it there. So yeah. And when you do your assignments, document it very well. Like don't do it like how we do it in college. Document it very, structure your code very properly. And that will really create an impression for them. That's how I see it. 
So, so once you went to Georgia Tech, how how tough was it for you to fit into their group? What all challenges yeah, you, so, you had faced? Yeah. So the thing when you're in uh, foreign labs and you're new to this place or any lab is that have a good mentor. So you have to catch hold of a mentor who's gonna guide you at least for a few days so that you accust- you get accustomed to the lab and then from then on you can take it forward yourself. So that way I, I had a very good mentor for myself and uh, I had things very clear. My objectives are very clear. That's how it helped me out. Sorry, so in India, the dietary college students do not actually get a chance to explore their research skills and also develop them. So how to overcome this uh, challenge? So the way to go forward is read a lot of research papers and um, code like you, you really need to know how to code stuff because if you just say that I'm a researcher and not code you're not going to work it's not going to work make sure your data structures and algorithms are perfect like you know what to code your languages your libraries are really good and then start actually doing research so if you talk about tier 3 colleges uh, I, I really don't think they act as a barrier for you to do research or to pursue research because everything is available online if you want to read research papers, you can you can get them for free. If you want to write you know, write some code and run some model on heavy, uh, you need some heavy hardware, you get things for free these days. So I think the most important thing is your patience to read and your ability to write code. These two, when they come together, and you know if you can read research papers, it doesn't really matter which college you're from. It's not that every tier one student in India is a researcher or every tier three student in India is not a researcher. So uh, it's all about your uh, passion to do research and your interest and patience. That's it. I would. That's the whole point. The so whatever domain you're working on, make sure your basics basics are perfect. Great, yeah. So uh, have you written some like you were awarded some uh, best research paper? Uh, in IEEE conferences, could you name the conferences and the uh, title of your thesis? Uh, what what work did you really sure. present there? Sure, sure. This was in my sophomore year, so it was just after my second year. So the conference is not a very reputed conference. It was just a start. I hope that's a start. It's it. The conference name is IEEE ICA Double CP. It was held in SKMP Sikkim Manipal University. So uh, the conference, the paper we wrote was about how we can use robotics, uh, computer vision, and and we developed a pipeline where using robot operating system and computer vision to provide uh, border surveillance. Um, yeah, that that was our uh, project on that. That was the, that was the paper. That was the research paper where we tried to evaluate different kind of models and different pipelines of communication between different parts of the robots and the computer vision segment. So that is where we won the uh, best paper uh, award in the category of robotics. Yeah. So that that kind of helped me in my master's application. It might not be the greatest conference, but it shows my attitude towards research, saying that yes, I am interested in research since my undergrad. That that helps there. Yeah. So so uh, how many internships? Like uh, what experience in the form of internships or some employment, including the Georgia Tech and other things which you have done. Uh, what, how much of them, like in total, have you done? Sure. So, uh, in my first year, I did an internship with the National Innovation Foundation. Second year with Inventor Robotics. Third year at Georgia Tech. Fourth year, uh, I'm currently in my fourth and final year. I'm working with the Indian Institute of Science and Dr. Yogesh Simran. And I'm uh, going to be done with that on 30th June. And post okay. that, I'm joining Inventor Robotics again. I'm joining Inventor Robotics again uh, for a six month uh, period before I go to my master's in the US. So these okay, are my so, internships. So you you got your uh, master's admit at which university in US? Sure, I, I got admits from University of Southern California, University of Maryland, and uh, Purdue. So from Southern California, I I received two two admits, which are uh, um, masters in computer science and masters in artificial intelligence. From and in University of Maryland, I received masters in robotics, and Purdue from West Front, I got uh, CS. So these are the three uh, admits I received. Okay, so which one are you finally planning to get into? Yeah, so I think at this point I will be joining University of Southern California because uh, I shortlisted a few professors I want to work with and in terms of computer vision, this university is ranked pretty high in the world rankings. Where do you see the future of robotic setting and what are the advancements students should equip with? Sure, so uh, I mean you might be seeing uh, 
may be following the news with the coronavirus uh, happening how robots are actually playing a key role in different areas and all so definitely robot is here to stay for long so uh, it's good people start exploring opportunities in robotics and as an undergrad or student who is currently an undergrad and interested in robotics there are few areas which they should be looking forward to be master one is uh, ros robot operating system in future all robots are going to work on robot operating system so you better start learning that second would be uh, computer vision and uh, computer vision or different parts of whichever segment of artificial intelligence interests and finally i think it's always good to get some hands on uh, robotics like you go and uh, make a robot yourself it could be a really small robot but just get a hands on feeling of how to construct robots and you know so these are the three areas you should be really hands on you should be good with your code and then you should learn the operating system i think these three areas if you're good you can start working in robotics and also be a little creative and understand what are the use cases you can use robotics it could be medical robotics it could be surveillance based robotics it could be you know commerce based robotics and you could look into areas which interests you and prepare your skill set in that direction I, especially i'm talking with respect to computer science of course it might differ from the electronics perspective uh you should be looking into uh you know you should be looking into solving solving problems in computer vision where you're trying to uh, uh where you're trying to identify use cases such as say customer engagement if that's a use case you're working on what are the computer vision algorithms or uh, you know code you need to write to create that engagement or interactive experience or say that you're working on nlp where you're trying to communicate the robot and uh, so you need to work on this so there's a particular topic called human robot interaction and this is the area which i feel uh, people should be looking into so uh, sai this to uh, if you have any messages that you would want to convey to the aspirants who want to make it big in robotics and nlp what's your piece of advice sure uh, i am not really sure with nlp but i can talk a bit about computer vision uh, so when it comes to uh, robotics and computer vision if you're looking to uh, pursue a masters or phd in the future or into research one thing i would say that is keep keep yourself aware of the recent trends like today you might be studying yolo yolo v3 and then just yolo v4 and then the day before you study yolo v5 so things just change like that and you'll be put out of the race quite quickly so don't um, don't stick to something just keep your skills uh, to every day and have your fundamentals very clear when i toss when i say fundamentals you must have linear algebra calculus and everything on your fingertips like you should really know what's probability and everything really really fundamental really clear and that's when you can actually start building or even look at building something ground breaking because if or not you'll always be using things which are available on public repositories and that's what you'll be keep doing all your life but um, if you really want to start contributing in making good research and good progress this is the way you go forward you look at research papers you read research papers you try to implement them and then then you you look into use case it might not be everybody is really interested in doing computer vision at the core they might want to look into applications of computer vision that's some that's something i like i i don't like to look into developing algorithms but i look to solve problems using computer vision so uh, that's an area you can look into look start identifying problems that is something i can suggest to people and then try solving them and uh, try to improvise on them do your experiments and reiterate over problems and solutions that is something i would like people to do maybe great sir i think your knowledge your journey your challenges and the advices which you had told to the told to our channel audience would definitely help them in uh, somehow later in their life sure i hope so okay sir sure, thank you I very so. much again for joining our channel and like taking some part of your time and spending with us definitely my pleasure my pleasure Okay, so uh, to, for all those who are viewing this uh, session, if you want to connect to Sai, you can uh, check him out uh, on the LinkedIn profile given in the description below. And uh, Sai, is there any other way uh, students and our viewers could reach you apart from LinkedIn? Sure. Sure. Uh, I run an Instagram page called Must Grow M U S T underscore G R O W, where we talk about uh, these kind of things like research and opportunities for undergraduate students and how they could plan out their four years of engineering. So you could connect with me there too. I generally respond quite quickly there. Great, Sai. Thank you. Thank you for joining us, Sai. It was a great session sure. with you. Sure. All the best. Bye bye. Okay.